Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zishan Khan and I welcome you all to Excellence Video Classes. The today's topic of discussion is another topic from human physiology that is the endocrine system. Endocrine system consists of the different endocrine glands and the hormones released by these glands. The hormones of the endocrine glands facilitates the different physiological activities of the human body. Before we get deeper into the topic, we must first understand what actually is a gland. A gland in a layman terminology can be described as a cell, a tissue or an organ that synthesizes certain chemicals within it and secretes it out for the different activities or the physiologies of the human body. On the basis of the nature of secretion, the glands can be uh, primarily categorized as the exocrine gland, the endocrine gland or heterocrine gland. Those glands that secretes out its secretion or the chemicals synthesized within it with the help of the duct or the narrow minute tubes are termed as the exocrine gland. The gland which do not have the duct and secretes out or release out its secretion into the bloodstream and with the flow of blood it reaches to the different parts of the body are the endocrine glands and those glands which has endocrine as well as the exocrine nature are termed as the heterocrine gland. Let's see some examples. The salivary gland in our mouth which releases saliva with the help of duct to the specific particular target organ is an example of an exocrine gland. The sweat gland, the mammary gland, the liver are the other some of the examples of the exocrine gland which have a duct and the duct carries that secretion to a particular region of the body. On the other hand, the endocrine gland includes the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the uh, adrenal gland, the gonads that include the testes and ovaries in the human body, they do not have the duct, they do not have any duct system that carries its secretion. So these kind of gland releases its secretion into the bloodstream and with the flow of blood it reaches to the different parts of the body. The secretions of the endocrine glands are exclusively hormones. So the hormones are the chemical messengers which are secreted by the endocrine glands and the hormones are distributed and circulated to the different parts of the body with the help of the flow of the blood. So the different hormones which are released in the human body are of course and obviously released by the different endocrine glands which serves different physiological functions of the human body. So the list of the different endocrine glands present in the human body is this. The foremost one is the hypothalamus gland followed by the pituitary and the pineal gland. All these three lie in the skull. Then is the thyroid gland. Behind the thyroid gland comes the parathyroid gland. In the thoracic region we have a thymus gland. In the abdomen we have the pancreas, the adrenal gland and gonads. In males the gonad is testis and in females the gonad is ovary. All these different endocrine glands are concerned with releasing different hormones. So we shall discuss individually all these glands, their hormones and the function of these hormones in the human body. So the first endocrine gland that we shall discuss is the pituitary gland. Also nicknamed as the master's gland. It's one of the most important gland because it releases a list of different hormones which also activates the functioning of different endocrine glands of the human body. This tiny P-shaped gland lies below the hypothalamus somewhere beneath the brain in our skull and releases lots of hormones which coordinates and controls the different physiological activities in the body. This 
structurally is divided into two parts. The anterior part is called adenohypophysis and the posterior part is called the neurohypophysis. This adenohypophysis or the anterior lobe of pituitary releases six different hormones which includes the growth hormone also known as somatostatin, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, prolactin, follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. The neurohypophysis has two parts, pars intermedia and pars distalis. Pars intermedia releases MSH that is melanocyte stimulating hormone and pars distalis releases ADH, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. So overall there are nine hormones which are released by the pituitary gland. Six from the adenohypophysis and three from the neurohypophysis. All of these hormones are extremely important in activation and basic physiological mechanism of our body. All these different hormones play different and basic physiological roles in the human body. The growth hormone is concerned with the growth of the human body right from the birth till the maturation. The thyroid stimulating hormone is concerned with the activation of the thyroid gland which in turn releases thyroxine. Adrenocorticotropic hormone activates the adrenal gland, the cortical part of the adrenal gland. The uh, prolactin is concerned with the release or the formation of the lactation or the milk after the parturition in female's body. The follicle stimulating hormone is concerned with the gametogenesis, the spermatogenesis in testes and oogenesis in ovaries and LH is concerned with the release of the gamete, also termed as the ovulating hormone. The MSH released by the pars intermedia is primarily concerned with the activation of the melanocytes which releases melanin, a skin pigment. The pars distalis releases two hormones which is ADH and oxytocin. ADH in nutshell is concerned with the regulation of the amount of urine produced with the human body. And oxytocin plays a vital role in parturition that is the birth of the child by the expansion of the muscles of the uterus and is also known as the milk ejecting hormone due to the contraction of the smooth muscles of mammary gland which helps in the phenomena of lactation. So all these nine different hormones released by the pituitary gland plays different functions and roles. The third gland in our list is the pineal gland. Pineal gland is also situated in the skull somewhere below the pituitary gland. It has a single hormone released by it which is known as melatonin. Melatonin, the basic function of this hormone is to control the biological clock of the body. Also termed as the diurnal cycle which includes the sleep-wake cycle, the mood disorders, the hunger and thirst of the body, the overall activities that an uh, individual undergoes from morning till sleep would be summed up as the biological clock of the body and that regulation is the responsibility of the melatonin which is released by the pineal gland. Moving ahead is the next gland which is the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is the largest among all the endocrine glands in the human body. Thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped gland situated behind the larynx. It has a series of hormones released by it which is collectively termed as thyroxine. In nutshell, the basic role of all the T3, T4 hormones of thyroxine is to control the BMR, the basal metabolic rate of the body. This basal metabolic rate of the body is very important activity which includes the digestion, the ATP formation and respiration, the overall absorption and utilization and all these activities is the function which is achieved by the thyroxine. The next gland which is behind the thyroid gland is the parathyroid gland. This parathyroid gland releases a hormone which is called parathormone. Parathormone is also known as hypercalcemic hormone. The primary function of parathormone is that it increases 
increases the calcium level in the blood by resorption of calcium ions from the bones. The presence of calcium in the blood is very important for clotting of blood. For the coagulation of blood, calcium is a very important requirement in blood and this calcium is brought in the blood or increased in the blood by this hormone released by this parathyroid gland and the hormone is called parathormone. The next gland which is the thymus gland, this is situated in our thorax just behind the trachea. This thymus gland releases a hormone called thymosine and thymosine primarily is concerned with the enhancement of the immune system of our body. That is, it increases the defense mechanism of our body and provides the ability to the body to fight against the pathogens and infections. The next gland in our list is the pancreas. And pancreas is the only heterocrine gland in the human body. Pancreas has exocrine part as well as the endocrine part. The exocrine part of pancreas releases the digestive enzymes that we have gone through in the previous discussion. The endocrine part of pancreas is concerned with the release of the hormones. The endocrine part of pancreas is given a term known as islets of Langerhans which has two primary kind of cells in it. The alpha cell and the beta cell. Alpha cell releases a very important hormone called glucagon and the beta cell releases a hormone called insulin. These both hormones in a coordinated manner take care of the glucose level in the blood. The glucose level in the blood is controlled and regulated by the coordination of these two hormones that is the glucagon and the insulin. The deficiency of insulin leads to a severe disorder in the physiological activity of the body which is termed as diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is the disorder that is due to the deficiency of insulin in the human body. Insulin is given a term hypoglycemic hormone and glucagon is called hyperglycemic hormone. It increases the level of glucose and insulin, it decreases the level of glucose from the blood by absorption of the glucose into the cells and tissues. If needed, in case of diabetes mellitus, insulin is injected in the body to decrease the level of glucose from the blood. The next gland is termed as the adrenal gland. Renal refers to kidney. Adrenal means above the kidney. These are the glands which are situated above both the kidneys. So these are termed as adrenal gland. It has two parts. The outer periphery is termed as adrenal cortex and the central part is called adrenal medulla. One of the very important hormone released by the adrenal medulla is the adrenaline, also termed as epinephrine. This hormone is nicknamed as the emergency hormone. It increases in the body in the terms of the need when the body actually is in any sort of emergency conditions. It's also termed as a triple F hormone, fear, fight and flight hormone. The next glands are gonads. The male gonad is testis and female gonad is ovary. The single hormone released from the testis is testosterone. Testosterone has several functions which includes the formation of gametes, that's the sperm in human male. The attainment of puberty in human male is accompanied by the release of these hormones. This brings about all the secondary sexual changes in human male. That includes the growth of facial hairs, that's the beard and moustaches. The muscular development in human male, the worsening of voice in human males. And when we talk of the gonads of females, the gonad is ovaries. A pair of ovaries is found in every human female within the abdomen. The ovary releases two hormones, the progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone is nicknamed as the pregnancy hormone. It plays a very vital role in the onset of pregnancy that we shall discuss in the reproduction topic. Estrogen is also concerned with the secondary sexual features in human females.
that's the onset of menstrual cycle the mammary gland uh, growth the uh, low high pitch voice that is found in females after the attainment of puberty the contour development that is the pelvic expansion in human females so overall we saw the list of glands and the secretions by the endocrine system in the human body and they overall regulate and control the different physiological activities that the human body undergoes.